Hello everyone, Oleg is here with another episode of TypeScript Fundamentals. Today we will be talking about function overloads. Let's see how this mechanism provides us a way of doing familiar stuff but in much cleaner way. We are back in good old rainbow application. If you still don't have the source code of this project, please go to github slash slash rainbow. You can also find the link in the description of this video. If you have been watching the previous session, you remember that we have refactored our mutate element function. So now it takes options object instead of three separate parameters. But let's imagine a situation where you want to have two different signatures for your function. I mean, you want both way to pass options object, but also separate parameters. Let's copy this function call and comment it out so we can use it later. So obviously if we want to switch back to our three separate parameters, TypeScript will complain badly since it looks nothing like object that we are expecting. Let's see how we can achieve our goal of making our function more flexible so it can work with both object as a parameter or separate parameters. Let's go with a name, this argument name. We remember that we have a fancy way of refactoring in TypeScript. So we will go down here, we'll select rename symbol and let's make our new variable name options or ID. Hit enter, all references have been changed. Now when we hover over to see the type annotation, the inferred type is any, definitely not what we want but it is good enough to start with. Let's put some conditions inside. We will be checking if our parameter is a string, so we can do some specific actions in this case. So I'll put this if statement. We will use type of operator. Type of returns string with the name of JavaScript type. So we will do type of options or ID, and if it equals string we will do something different inside it's gonna be actually the implementation from from previous session before we did the refactoring so this to be replaced with options or id and we understand that at this point it can be string only the object cannot get in here because we have this condition here we'll put back style and interval of course, we don't have those two variables defined now, but we will fix it very soon. And this second block we'll put in else block. Now it is the time to do the fun stuff. We will define function overloads in order to accommodate two signatures. So the syntax is kind of funky, but let's see how it works. We'll sort of redeclare the function. Put the same name, put parentheses again. Now inside we will put the option name here. We remember that we are using this interface. It's not returning anything, so we will put void. And we will do the same thing for another signature. And this time we will put our three separate parameters. As we remember, we had element ID, type string, style with type annotation of type alias named valid style name and end which was a number. You can see that our TypeScript is still not happy and the reason for that is that I forgot to put optional parameters here. We'll put style question mark and integer question mark. Let's go and see the place where our function gets called. If we hover over here, we will see that it picked up one of overloads and it is smart enough to pick up the right one because we see it's telling us that we should have three separate parameters and it based on the first input that goes here, which is a string. Let's see what happens in the second case. 
pretty much the same function but now it takes the right overload showing us that option should be I mutate element interface let's go back and see what happens to our actual JavaScript we'll open the terminal save the file and in our JavaScript we can tell right away that function overloads are not present here because it's in no shape or form is valid JavaScript but at the same time while writing code in TypeScript it provides us all benefits of type checking we can verify that our type checking is still working by messing up our function parameters here good and let's see what happens if we change the object a little bit yeah the same thing it gives us the warning let's go and see the last thing if our application is still working okay refresh the page yeah we see no errors and color is still getting changed which means our app is working we learned today how to use function overloads in order to keep our functions flexible. If you like this video, please subscribe.